You know, usually I'm good with only one Blumhouse movie a year because of all the blood, it's scary, and it gives me a lot of nightmares, but luckily for me, we get four of these movies over the next two weeks on Amazon Prime. Oh, I can't handle it. Nope. What's going on you guys, James here with another real review and today I'm diving into The Lie and Black Box, two of the four movies that are a part of the Welcome to the Blumhouse series on Amazon Prime Video. Now these two movies in particular release on Tuesday, October 6th, and the next two, which I'll bring you guys reviews of, release the following week. It's very interesting because when I first heard about this collection, I figured four Blumhouse movies? Are you kidding me? This is perfect, especially for October, and given the current climate of everything, yeah, we're not seeing these in theaters anytime soon. But before I dive into that, you guys, if it's your first time here at the channel, welcome to Real James. If you like movies just like I do, go ahead and consider subscribing to the channel by hitting the big red button below and tap on the bell so you stay up to date with anything new. I got some Legend of Korra reactions coming this week and some more movie reviews as we go along. I mean, guys, it's so busy here at Casa del... Uh, real James. I'm not very good with Spanish, but tell me exactly how I say house of real James in Spanish in the comments below And let me know if you actually have seen these movies and if you have what did you think of him? Alrighty, so let's go ahead and get into the very first film of the two that I want to talk about which is the better one of the bunch Black Box Black Box was directed by Emmanuel Osei Kufour and it stars Mamadou Athi, Amanda Christine, Tosin Morohunfola, and Felicia Rashad. The premise of the movie, without spoiling anything, is one man is trying to regain his memory after a terrible car accident that left him brain dead, and thanks to this very experimental procedure, he was able to regain some of his memory back. However, there's something very mysterious lying within the depths of his mind. The premise here is actually really cool, and I'm a big fan of movies that can pull off their twist, and here I thought the twist was nice. I, I figured, oh my gosh, this is a very unique idea and I think that the director did a good job at sticking to their vision and allowing it to be fleshed out over the course of the film. This also had a very Blumhouse feel to it. It was creepy in some moments, especially in those dream sequences. There's a contortionist. That's all I'll say. And it was just nice. It was a nice break from your usual big budget horror movie. This felt pretty darn good, especially with everything the director and the cast had to work with. In terms of acting though, I think that Amanda Christine shines as Ava. She is the daughter to Nolan, and that's our main character of course, and Ava is this girl who's going through a very traumatic experience just like her father did, and she's trying to cope with it every single day. I think Amanda Christine actually does a decent job at giving this character a layered approach. I understood her as a child kind of assuming that adult responsibility and that adult role because you know her father's forgetting sort of things and she's responsible for scheduling you're gonna be late you have 15 minutes and she plots all the directions in the GPS so she does a decent job at being an adult even though she is a kid and what's really cool is that Tosin, and her co-star here plays Gary the best friend to Nolan and I think he did a darn good job I believe he's in the shy and I love the fact that this movie was not necessarily always taking itself seriously, but when it did get a little emotional, sometimes I bought into it. However, that didn't happen often. So let's get into why the black box didn't work. And that starts right at the top with our lead. Mamadou Athi, who plays Nolan, sometimes is serviceable. I just don't necessarily think he is particularly convincing in this role. I, his performance is a little wooden. Yes, sometimes that could be a script issue. But the thing is, his co-stars around him were delivering raw emotion, and he couldn't really break through, and it almost felt a little reserved. Maybe he was holding back. I don't necessarily know if that's what the director called for, but I don't think he delivered the strongest performance, and the movie centers around him, and I never fully bought into what he was bringing on screen, and that was a little disappointing. And goodness me, guys, when it comes to that third act, this movie is just too long. It overstays its welcome, unfortunately, and when when we get closer and closer to the end, you think the film is going to just roll credits, and then it throws you into another scene, and at that point, I wasn't exhausted, but I just didn't necessarily know if the movie needed all the fat here. It could have probably trimmed down some scenes and maybe lingered on others, but it just didn't necessarily have the strongest third act, and that really pulled me out of the movie. Alrighty, so let's move on to the second film of the bunch, The Lie, directed by Vina Sud, starring Joey King and Peter Sarsgaard. I know the Sarsgaard family, they just have like a million siblings, apparently. Now, this movie actually has a 
twist as well, so I'm not spoiling anything, but let's read the description from IMDb so I don't slip up. A father and daughter are on their way to dance camp when they spot the girl's best friend on the side of the road. When they stop to offer their friend a ride, good intentions soon result in terrible consequences. I won't lie to you guys, when I read that summary, I figured, oh my god, I am 100% in on this movie. And what's crazy is I had never heard of this movie, and a little fun fact, this was shown at TIFF in 2018, so it's been shelved for two years. Unfortunately though, it was shelved for two years for a good reason. Now. Let's not start with the negatives, let's get into the positives, and that really is Joey King, Peter Sarsgaard, and the rest of our lead cast, they're just so solid. Joey King plays Kayla, the daughter to Peter Sarsgaard, and Morelli Innos' character. Both of them, of course, are separated, so they're going through a divorce, but these crazy series of events somehow brings them together under the same roof. Now, I'm not gonna lie, you guys, there were some really tense moments that these actors completely sold me on. I don't think the writing was very good here, but it was the acting, the performances, they were able to kind of bring this movie up a notch, you know, give it an extra star if you were going to rate it. There's really not a bad performance in our lead cast either, which is cool. There's not one that's better than the other. I think that they all did a pretty darn good job with what they were given. And again, let me revisit the premise here. It's super interesting. I thought it was incredibly unique. However, it's one of those premises that sound pretty good on paper and didn't necessarily translate well to the screen. And the reason I say that is because guys, there's a laughably bad twist here. Now, I shook my head, I scratched my scalp, like, I was like, what is going on here? And I don't know why I just said scratch my scalp, but I don't know why they decided to throw this twist in. If anything, they could have just continued on the pace that they were going, the trend, it, it was going in a good direction, and then that third act just took the roots of the film and broke them, ripped them out of the ground and said, you know what, we're just going to undo everything we just did. So that's definitely disappointing to me. And even though I said Joey King, for example, brought a really good performance, the writing here was kind of cheesy. The dialogue was sometimes just a little unbelievable, and I hate the fact that they relegated Joey King to just being this crying teenager sometimes. I'm like, no, no, she's really good. You gotta give her some of that emotional baggage and just let her carry it. And sometimes they just wrote around some moments that they could have built on. It was so back and forth for me. And the biggest question I had at the end of the movie was, why is this in the Blumhouse collection? This isn't a horror movie. Guys, this is not scary at all. This is more of a drama slash thriller. And if that's the case, maybe we could have swapped this out. But honestly, I guess it had to have a platform to be released on anyway, so I understand the business side of it, but when it comes to the vibe of Welcome to the Blumhouse, listen, they told us this is a scary movie series, and this is not scary. So overall, you guys, Black Box is a much better film than The Lie, and it's not only better because it has more of a Blumhouse feel, I just felt like the vision there was just more consistent. Now is it unfortunate that Black Box had more of a made-for-TV feel? Absolutely, but The Lie had a more cinematic feel and it wasn't better. The Lie really feels like something we've seen before, Black Box introduces a different concept, a unique concept, but both are not excellent. The thing is, I will give the edge here to Black Box. So. At the end of it all, am I disappointed with the start to Welcome to the Blumhouse? I am, as a fan of Blumhouse and everything that they've produced and everything that they've worked on, I don't necessarily think that this is their best work, and there's a reason maybe why The Lie, for example, was shelved for two years, but these two movies aren't necessarily the strongest start to my October, but am I hopeful for the rest of Welcome to the Blumhouse? I am. These last two films that are releasing next week, I think that they might be good. I'm just going to stay optimistic like I was with these two. I just hope I come away loving it and not really being disappointed. Alrighty, you guys. Well, there you have it. Those are my reviews for Black Box and The Lie, but I want to know what you think when you watch these movies this week. So go ahead and get loud in the comments below and smash that like button if you haven't already. And if you don't want to miss out on my reviews for next week's movies, go ahead and hit the big red button below, subscribe to the channel, and tap on those bell notifications so you stay up to date with anything new we do at the channel. Alrighty, guys. Well, let me go ahead and get started on those movies. Please be good. Please be good. Please be good. Alrighty, y'all. Again, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you at the next screening.